we intensely rehearsed them and we got them off. Eddie Cochran with Marty Wilde's band The Wildcats in session for BBC Radio Saturday Club, broadcast on the 12th of March 1960, by which time Eddie had been up and down the country knocking everyone out with what I say and bringing the name of Ray Charles to mainstream British music fans for the very first time. Here's Marty. At the time, I can't remember, I was going to move on to do something else, which meant the, the band weren't going to be working. Jim said to me, you know, would you mind if I said, no, not at all, it'd be great. For you to work with Eddie and um, and and I, you know, I can't use it uh, at the moment. I just can't. So it worked out both ways. It worked out great for them and and, and good mm. for me because I didn't want to lose the band at that point. The Wildcats were Brian Licorice locking on bass, who we've already heard from, Brian Bennett on drums, Tony Belcher on rhythm guitar, and on lead, Big Jim Sullivan. Larry booked the the American guys, and they told us that uh, there were two Americans coming over. They didn't tell us who it was at the time. And we said, oh, great. He said that uh, Marty was going somewhere to do a film or something. So uh, they wanted us to back whoever was coming over. And it turned out originally that we were going to back Gene Vincent. And I thought, oh, that's great, because I knew all the Gene Vincent solos, you know, and uh, Cliff Gallup and all that sort of thing. And... Uh, and when it comes, we were to back Eddie Cochran. Well, Eddie was a little bit less known than Gene, you know, and wasn't quite so exciting, I suppose, at the time. But when we came to meet him in the uh, rehearsal room, it was unbelievable. He, he could play everything. He played the guitar, he played drums, he played bass, and showed us all what to do, you know. It was great. I mean, he'd been playing since he was very young, you know, and he'd been on the road with his uncle or something, and he played um, Chet Atkins style, which was something I'd just got into, you know, and uh, showed us lots of things. You know, he had the, the unwound third, or, um, which was bendy, all the strings were quite bendy, and he, he played good blues. Eddie's Blues, which he recorded in Hollywood in August 1959 and showing exactly why he just blew everyone away when he came to Britain. Some astonishing stuff towards the end of that track. Talk about ahead of his time. Incidentally, that's one of many instrumentals Eddie recorded, all recently gathered together on one CD called Eddie Cochran String Fever. In the audience for a London show on the 13th of February 1960 was future UK guitar hero Albert Lee. The first time I saw Eddie was uh, at the Granada 
Woolwich. Of course, I'm very impressed. You know, you have to realize that, you know, there weren't many good guitar players to go and see around that time. It was only like Big Jim who was playing rock and roll. Uh, so we, we were all getting started. Uh, when Eddie came came over, it was it was uh, fantastic, you know. And uh, I, I remember a little bit about the show. You know, he was wearing that kind of uh, silvery waistcoat. And, of course, he had his wonderful uh, Gretsch 6120. It was great stuff. And it wasn't long after that that uh, we had a, a drummer in our band who had a lot of front, you know, and he talked his way into Larry Parnes office. So we ended up doing a tour as a backing band for Larry Parnes. And, uh, you know, the bass player and I were only 16 and the drummer was like 17 or 18. And uh, we left our, our single amplifier. We had a Selma True Voice amplifier, 19 watts. And the bass player and I went through this amp together, you know, so you can imagine how, how wonderful it sounded. Anyway, we left it at Larry Palm's office and we went in to pick it up uh, one day and they said, oh, um, actually, uh, Eddie Cochran has borrowed it and uh, it's around at his hotel. And he was staying at a hotel near Marble Arch. So we, we went up there and knocked on the door and he didn't invite us in unfortunately you know he was he was fairly friendly and he said oh yeah i've got your amp he said oh man he said uh yeah man i don't like these amps he said oh no sound man no sound so it was very brief you know i could i could see on the floor in his ho hotel room i could see the guitar case and i was oh you know I get, we were just shy young kids you know so we we didn't really get uh, any conversation going with him so that that was uh, the total uh, of my dealings with eddie cochran if only Albert Lee had got a chance to tell him his name, because Eddie was born in the town of Albert Lee, spelled L-E-A. Licorice Locking also assesses Eddie's status in the guitar hierarchy at that time. Way above anyone else I, I, I've ever, ever heard. You know, Big Jim was uh, enthralled by him, I know that. Because uh, Big Jim was always into Chet Atkins, you know, that he was developing his Chet Atkins style. A finger picking and all that kind of thing and Eddie was brilliant at it and so uh, I think Eddie taught uh, Big Jim a lot It's the Saturday Night Rock and Roll Party with Jeff Barker across the BBC West and South West With a special tribute to Eddie Cochran on the 50th anniversary of his death Easter Sunday 1960 <laughs> I'm a gooner as a holler About a working all summer Just to try to earn a dollar Yeah, every time I call my baby Try to get a date My boss said My son, you gotta work a leg Sometimes I wonder What I'm a gonna do But there ain't no cure For the summertime blue Oh, well, my mom and papa told me, son, you gotta make some money. But if you wanna use the car to go right next Sunday. Well, I didn't go to work, told the boss I was sick. You can't use the car, cause you didn't work a lick. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do, but there ain't no cure for the sometime blue. Gonna take two weeks, gonna have a fun vacation I'm gonna take my problem to the United Nations Well, I called my congressman and he said, go I'd like to help you, son, but you're too young to vote Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do But there ain't no cure for the summertime blue. 